Animation. The lifeblood of the motion picture. Or whatever else the quote actually says. I forgot what the quote actually says. Animation in Blender is one of the most difficult things to approach inside of the application. Or so people think. In fact, it turns out that animation is as simple as pressing the I key, then moving the playhead on the timeline, hitting the I key once again, moving the playhead on the timeline once again, hitting the I key once again, and lastly, move the playhead on the timeline and, you guessed it, hit the I key once again. In all honesty, there is some complicated stuff that needs to be learned in order to actually do animation properly in Blender. But it is that simple once you get the hang of things. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a little series I like to call the Blender Discourse Course. An extended mini series that serves to document the various shenanigans that I have encountered throughout my time learning Blender. Today, we are going to explore one of the two types of animation that I have found to be the most frustrating and the most fun inside of Blender 4.0, camera animation. With that out of the way, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button right next to the subscribe button. And since you're already down there, go ahead and drop a comment as well, just because why not? Let me know what you want to see me make in Blender. The interaction is really gonna help decide what comes next in the series. I already have a couple of things planned, but I would love to see what you all have in store. As we jump right on into the entire ordeal, I wanted to talk a little bit about the two types of animation that I've been most curious with in Blender. The first one that I've told you about Camera animation is exactly what it sounds like. The second one is a little tricky though. This is one of the exact reasons why I wanted to separate the two because the second one ends up branching into other different types of animation. And that type of animation is character animation. Character animation in Blender ends up being object animation, head animation, mouth animation, hair animation, water animation, and every other type of animation that you can think of. Did I say animation enough times for you? That's kind of the reason why I said character animation just to wrap everything up in a nice little bow. When you have a scene in Blender, anything can be a character, even the camera itself. But there's only one thing that can be a camera in the app, and that is the camera itself. Even though I'm pretty sure there is a way to turn the character into a camera in Blender, I'm just not sure if I've ever found it or I just haven't found it yet. You're just going to have to bear with me when I say those are the two types of animation for right now. At the end of the day, animating the camera or cameras in a scene for Blender is easier, put an asterisk on that, than animating the character in the scene. There are a lot more bones and moving parts that you need to worry about when it comes to character animation. We're gonna get to all of that later, but remember to keep it simple when it comes to your camera animations. Otherwise, your head will start to smoke just like an old laptop trying to run the current version of Blender. And speaking of keeping your animation simple, that was kind of the opposite of what we ended up doing today for this assignment. The assignment was a simple set of camera animations that you'll end up seeing a little later, but I wanted to showcase the posing, well, my posing practice and posing ability in Blender, as well as my camera animation prowess, which is basically none. But most of that ended up being me getting stuck in the viewport, as well as the keyframe section and the animation timeline, trying to figure out why my eye key was not <laughs> making uh, frames for me to key and everything. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. So another shenanigan that this entire series is documenting me forgetting that depending on where your mouse cursor is in the Blender app, that will be where you are actually interacting. You don't have to click on certain parts of the software to actually interact with them. I keep forgetting that, but you know, another shenanigan that ensued in addition to solving problems with the viewport that actually weren't there was getting this entire shot set up for this sequence of revealing the profiles the side shot that i really wanted to get just to act as a slight pain reveal it, it it really worked by the end of it but at the moment that i was making it i was trying to figure out how to not get Hera's face slash skull in the shot as the camera panned back then I realized I actually had to make a couple of different adjustments. And then once I, you know, pulled the camera back and made some extra tweaks, I was like, all right, cool. We got it. It's kind of a little better than that. And that kind of wrapped up most of this particular part for this camera. But we also have another camera to go through. And after getting all of the keyframes actually set up this time, because like I said, I messed up a lot during this entire thing. By complete accident, or I couldn't say it was on purpose, I ended up doing some character animations while I was working on this entire scene. 
this entire scene was mainly an assignment on camera animation and i just by accident like i said completely messed up and added keyframes to parts of characters bodies that didn't need to be added in the keyframes completely everybody's guns and, and hands were moving and legs were moving around and i just had to cut part of that out and then come back around to it that was about an hour and a half of my entire life done and ready to go and then we are back now into just setting up the lighting and actually getting the cool part of the entire lighting area lighting situation and camera animation part ready to go i also kept rendering and re-rendering the images to make sure padme's eyes actually came out right because i think i had her eyes too squinted as if she was aiming down the sights for a pistol, but well, that, that was kind of the point, but it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So I had to keep tweaking. And then as I kept tweaking it, I ended up messing around with Ahsoka's face. And then this is where some of the character animation came into play. I just wanted to see how the individual parts link up together. Once you actually put select everything and then put everything in the same set of keyframes. Uh, by the end of it, it looked pretty good, but I am not going to be practicing lip sync on a character anytime soon so i don't really have to worry about something like this it was still a fun thing to do and also i'm very grateful that these models came together at the end of the day and are able to basically allow me to do stuff like this because this was a very big experiment that i did not know i really wanted to do but at the same time i was very happy to see that it was possible that brings me into the second part when it comes to how to use the camera or at least how to use the rendering engines that come with Blender. So you have two different rendering engines. You got Cycles and then you got Eevee. You have Workbench as well and then another one, but we're only gonna focus on Cycles and Eevee. Cycles was a lot easier to work with because it makes everything look just a little bit more realistic. Eevee is the low down, dirty, and very quick way to render certain things depending on what your lighting setup is supposed to be in Blender. And on top of all that, you also have samples. Samples in Blender are basically the well they aren't but they are this is how i this is how i explain it to myself to keep it simple samples in blender are basically you adding more and more pixels to an image to make sure the pixel image quality is the highest it can be basically you add more pixels to the resolution more samples means that the software is going to go over the entire image again and add more samples and just add more resolution to it and that's basically it like i just, i have no idea how else to actually explain it I don't know what the true scientific way and function of how to explain the rendering engines are, but at the end of the day, I was super satisfied with it, even though I still kept going back and just tweaking every single little detail because this, this whole thing was fun, but very frustrating. And once I was actually done with everything, I exported all of my frames, all 700 of them, I think, and then threw them into the Blender image editor threw those together, got the sequence together, got all of the stuff that I needed to do to get everything done. And the final result, very happy, very excited with the final result. I think they came together pretty good. The reveals of this entire shot was honestly worth the effort. I think I ended up liking how I had everything rendered in Eevee compared to how I had everything rendered in Cycles. I'll let you be the judge of that. Let me know in the comment section below, do you prefer Cycles or Eevee? Because it's honestly a toss up for me at this point. But with all that being said, thanks for tuning in to this second episode of the Blender Discourse course. I really had a lot of fun with this one and the next one is basically going to be a little similar, but you'll see. It's going to be filled with a lot of donuts. I'm not going to spoil it anymore. If you like the video, feel free to hit that like button, drop a subscribe if you feel like it, and share this video with someone you may know who is interested in learning Blender because they can definitely learn what not to do from watching this video. And with all that being said, I will catch you all later.